Well, in this example, it says three airline companies offer flights between Corridon and Lincolnville. Several randomly selected flight times and units of minutes between the towns for each airline are shown in the table below. Assume that the population of the flight times are normally distributed. We have to do that because we have sample sizes less than 30. Uh, the samples are independent. In other words, one is not related to the other. And the population variances uh, are equal. So all these things are kind of assumptions that we have to make to be able to uh, run this test. And uh, at the 0.01 alpha level, can you conclude that there is a difference in the means of the flight times? Okay, uh, well, if so, where are the significant differences? And uh, note, in real life, we'd be best off to be sampling 30 from uh, each group here. So what I did is I have the flight times for airline one, airline two, and airline three, and went to the data sheet and uh, got that data and put it into the uh, NOVA sheet right here. Then after I put that data in, I put the number of groups as three, and I copied the data uh, results over here. So just click that button and what it does is it copies the results that are over here to this area right here. And uh, now it, it gives you all the information you would want and we actually see that the p-value right here is very low and we would reject this uh, uh, null hypothesis that the means are equal. So at this point uh, now, we could go clear down to the 0.01 alpha level, but let's see if it told us an alpha level to use. Um, see, if so, are there any significant, uh, where are the significant differences? Let's see if it says, okay, at the 0.01 alpha level, well, that's as far low as we can go anyway. So since we were able to reject it at the 0.01 alpha level, we would say that, um, uh, let's see here where we have this. Uh, therefore, there is a significant difference in at least one of the mean air, uh, air flight times. So, see, really running the ANOVA is really only a first step. If you get a reject the null hypothesis, then you have to run a post hoc test. Because right now, we only know that at least one of these mean air flight times is significantly different. Now, if this would have been a do not reject the null hypothesis, we would be done. We would know that there's no significant difference in these. But now, since we got a rejected hypothesis, we don't know. We know that there is a significant difference, but we don't know between which airline there is a significant difference. Is the significant difference between airline one and airline two, airline one and airline three, or airline two and airline three? Now, actually. If you get a reject the null hypothesis, you know there's a difference in the extreme ones, the ones farthest away. So we actually uh, could tell pretty automatically that the uh, average air flight time for airline one is significantly less than airline three. I only know that because they're the farthest apart, and also I had to get a reject the null hypothesis before I could say that. Now below here are your post hoc tests, and they tell you where the significant differences are. And there are several different types of post hoc tests. The most conservative or the most least likely to give you a reject the null hypothesis is called the Chaffe test. And this one shows that there is a significant difference between the averages for group one and group three because we reject the null hypothesis on that one. Uh, you don't just go and run these uh, on the two at a time on the unpaired t-test. Uh, you actually run these post hoc tests, which are done automatically for you. And this one shows that there's a significant difference between one and three. And we saw that anyway up here at the top. And since you uh, got to reject, instead of just saying they're significantly different, we can actually say that group one's flight time is actually significantly, its average is significantly less than group three's. Now, there's no significant difference between group one and group two, or even group two and group three at the 0.01 alpha level. And you can scroll down and it has other ones. Uh, this is one of the most popular types of post hoc tests is this one is called the Tukey. Let's see if I can space it out here a little bit so you can see it, T-U-K-E-Y. But it gives you the same results that there's only a significant difference between group one and group three. And if you scroll farther down, there's another type of post hoc test, which actually gives you, uh, this is probably the least conservative, the most liberal test that is able to give you more uh, rejections uh, with the same data. And this shows that two and three are also significantly different at the 0.01 alpha level. 
and uh, just showing you this if you scroll farther down uh, you get uh, this one, no, this one is actually the most liberal test, and this is uh, shows significant difference between 1 and 3 and 2 and 3 at the 0.01 alpha level. Farther down yet, there's another test that can be done if there's a control group, and you have to use group 1 as the control group. So uh, that one, um, you know, that's that's what that one's used for. Now, the, oh, this was at the 0.1 alpha level, to tell you the truth. If we check this at the 0.01, O1 alpha level, well, we would still get the uh, rejected null hypothesis that there is a significant difference. And scrolling down here, we see that there's a uh, significant difference between 1 and 3 using the Chaffe. And if we scroll down, we get the same results using the Tukey. And we get the same results using the Newman Cowles SNK. And we get the same results using the Fisher. So and then down here, if there was a control group, it will run it, but we didn't have a control group in this, so um, uh, we don't run this one. That's called the Dene test. And if we check the 0.05 alpha level, seeing uh, we well, there is a significant difference, and here's the F test. And actually over here, it tells you the degrees of freedom between, like it would be F, comma, F parentheses 2 comma 27. You know, this tells you the degrees of freedom that you're dealing with between and within. But, uh, and you could see your rejection region if you, if you wanted to here. Let's see if there's a place to set the start and end of this graph, uh, right here. Uh, seeing that there's a test statistic out here at, uh, about 6 point something and the, uh, critical value is 3 point something. Then if we look at this, let's go from maybe, uh, 1 to Oh, let's go, let's go out here a little bit further, maybe two to, uh, seven. And you can see the test statistic way far out there. And it's in the rejection region at the 0.05 alpha level. We get the same results here, I think. Reject to between, uh, one and three. Actually, the Newman Cowles and probably the next one will give you reject at the 0.05 alpha level at the, uh, uh, at the 0.05 alpha level between 1 and 3 and 2 and 3. So uh, that is the ANOVA test with the post hoc test that is done here automatically with the graph and, and everything you'd ever want there.